Hello, my name is Dr. Monica Flores. I'm a pediatrician in South Florida since 2001. In this series of videos, we will cover normal newborns, their routine care, precautions, and all the weird things they do. These are the ABCs of newborn care. A normal newborn's heart rate is much higher than adults and will feel like a flapping hummingbird inside their chest. At first, newborns hold themselves in a fetal position, arms and legs bent in. They should move all extremities. They have several reflexes that are completely normal. They step, they startle, they grasp. Sometimes their foot or leg will shake and stop if you place their hand gently on top. If it does not stop immediately, call your provider. Newborns have low tone, but you will be surprised by their strength. They can lift their heads and will wiggle like caterpillars. Never leave them on a bed or couch because they can and will fall off. They must sleep on their back, face up, on a firm surface without blankets or pillows until they roll over on their own. I like to have tummy time on our chest while we are awake and watching them and feeling them breathe. The skull bones haven't fused and for this reason you should make sure to hold them in different positions, sometimes on your right shoulder, sometimes on your left, and when you lay them to sleep on their back, position your head sometimes facing straight up, others to the right or left. That way their head will not flatten in the back. If they sleep on their belly or on soft surfaces, they may stop breathing completely, increasing the risk of crib death or SIDS. They should never sleep in our beds. If they sleep with us, we could squash them, or they could fall off the bed, or they can get stuck between the mattress and the headboard, or under pillows or blankets. Best for them to sleep in the bassinet or crib next to your bed. Baby red blood cells are immature and last half the time that ours do. And their liver is immature. This may cause jaundice, turning the whites of their eyes or face yellow. If the yellow color starts to go down into the chest, belly, or legs, bring it to the attention of your provider. They may recommend more frequent feeds or indirect sunlight, or even a blood test. Newborns have been exposed to a big hormone load during delivery, and those hormones can cause newborn girls to have vaginal discharge and even a little bit of blood, like a period. Because of these hormones, both boys and girls can get small breast buds, especially if they continue to breastfeed, because the hormones are being transferred transferred by the milk. Baby should have one layer more than you in order to be comfortable. Put the thermostat at whatever temperature you want and then bundle the baby appropriately. If you have on shorts and a t-shirt, then the baby should have an undershirt and PJs. Make sure to cover their head if it's cold and protect them from abrupt changes in temperature, going from a warm house into a cold car or vice versa. Babies should never have a fever. Any temperature higher than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius is an emergency. If you are checking a temperature, any infant under the age of six months needs to have a rectal temperature. Check the temperature only if they're not feeling well, irritable, sleeping too much, or in any way acting sick. Sneezing is not necessarily a sign of illness. It's how newborns clean their nose. An occasional cough is okay, but a persistent one is not. Congested breathing may be normal. If you are worried your newborn is sick, call immediately. You never need to give your newborn any medication, including Tylenol or ibuprofen, unless you speak to your provider first. Baby's kidneys are immature, and therefore their formula needs to be mixed exactly as it says on the can. They do not need any extra water or foods because their body does not know how to process it and this may lead to allergies. Do not add cereal to the bottle unless you have talked to your provider. Baby skin is extremely porous and absorbs everything. Therefore, I recommend that you use hypoallergenic fragrance-free products until at least six months of age. They do not necessarily have to be baby products. They can be adult products. Just make sure they're fragrance-free. For detergents, I like all free and clear. I do not use fabric softener for baby clothing or bedding. For soaps, I like Dove and for lotions, I stick with any light. Baby skin will peel in the first few days of life. When they are inside their belly, they are surrounded by amniotic fluid, and when they come out, they are surrounded by air. Do they have to lose their fish skin and get their human skin? Peeling of the skin does not bother them, but if it bothers you, you can use a fragrance-free lotion. Babies have many rashes that can be completely normal. There can be red spots on the back of their neck that usually goes away between three to six years of age. Red spots between their eyebrows or on their eyelids that usually go away by the time they're two years of age. Blue spots on their booties or backs and sometimes even on their legs or arms that look like bruises. These will usually fade by the age of five to six years. They can have red dots, red dots with white bumps, or just plain white bumps. Either on their nose, face, or even on their gums. All of these are normal, but if you are in doubt, speak to your provider. If you notice that the tongue is white, that can be normal. But if the whiteness starts to extend onto the inside of their cheeks or gums or lips, and you cannot easily wipe it off, that can be abnormal. Speak to your provider. Babies can go out and about. A walk early in the morning or late in the afternoon is good for both of you.
If you do have to take them out to the store or mall, keep them in the stroller. Cover the stroller with a blanket to avoid people touching them. Wash your hands before you pick them up. If you invite people over to meet your baby, make sure they are healthy. They have not been around anybody who is sick. They wear a mask. They avoid kissing the baby on their eyes, nose, or mouth, and they wash their hands before touching the baby. Bathe the newborn only after the cord has fallen off, and you do not have to do anything to the cord. Do not apply alcohol or any lotions or creams. If the cord or the skin around it becomes red or starts to bleed or ooze, call your provider immediately. If your baby loves the bath, then do it as often as you like. If they hate their bath, then bathe them less frequently. Use only a washcloth. Bathing in a newborn is mostly a way to bond and to get them fatigued before they sleep. Remember, they don't go out into the playground or play in the dirt. Baby's fingernails grow very quickly. The easiest way to cut the baby's nails is to file them down. Do not use your mouth and be careful when you are using nail clippers because it's very easy to slip and cut the tips of their fingers. Be careful with babies and pets. Make sure that you introduce them slowly and appropriately. And just like with young siblings, do not leave them unattended. I do not like to allow pets inside a baby's room, crib, or bassinet. You may find yourself staring anxiously at your newborn, wondering if what they are doing is normal. To continue to learn the ABC of newborn care, what is normal and what is not, subscribe and view the whole series.